So let's hope for the better. It's gonna be stable. I can't wait to invite our guests today. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone. Milkos, whenever you get a chance, are we gonna connect? Here we go. I think it's stable this time. All right. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. Now we are live. This time it works. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I can see I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? So I don't I don't need the headphones then. Yeah. You you have a smile that is uh, worth a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you too as well. Welcome everybody. Bonjour à tous. Merci d'être patient. Uh, nous sommes live. J'ai la, la, la chance et le plaisir d'avoir uh, un, un invité que j'attends depuis un, un bout de temps et je suis très heureux de l'avoir aujourd'hui. Um, la session va être en anglais. Je ferai quelques traductions en français. Um, donc ceux qui sont francophones, ne vous inquiétez pas. Je traduirai l'essence de ce qui est dit à chaque fois en, en français. Um, Milkos, welcome. Are you following football? Are you following basketball? Are you following any sports? Formula One. I'm, I'm into racing. I'm into car racing. All, all of them? Okay. Yeah, for me, it's Formula One, yeah. Oh, you're into car racing? That's yeah, so... Yeah, it's, um, what, the first quarter? Yeah, so season, right, right? No, no, next, uh, next step is Silverstone. It's in the UK. Formula One. Yeah. Silverstone, yeah. Silverstone is not yet half of the season. It's like the the tenth or so, tenth race or so, right? Yeah, it's the next. It's, it's yeah, it's this one. We, we, we're there. It's this week. This weekend. Yeah. Yeah. There was it was it was Austria last week, right? It was Austria yeah. last week. Yeah. 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 I like Formula One also, but uh, I'm probably not following as closely as you yeah. are. I'm, I'm, into, I'm into racing. I'm into mechanic sports, so racing uh, or everything with a motor. Okay, very good. Very good. Yeah. So welcome, everybody. Hey, brother, how are you? Abdu uh, Suley Job came to, uh, to join us. So uh, let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this session is in English, but I will translate some of it in French. I would like to welcome a unique talent, uh, somebody who is in design, innovation, engineering, uh, somebody who is creating arts, artware. I want to get through his entire CV because we will have a conversation about it. Uh, but if you're here, you are in the right place. It's going to be a really nice conversation. So, as you are known, Welcome to Acosphere Instagram Live. We're delighted to have you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. So let's get right into it. Yeah. What is your story, my friend? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So what is your story? Um, uh, where do what is your, your story? <laughs> Um, um, I think my story is kind of similar uh, with uh, stories from uh, people from my generation. I, I was born in Dakar, 
Um, from uh, my parents came from Casamance, so my dad was a policeman. So he's one of in his generation, like one of the first that had like a stable job from his village. So uh, we having like a small family, but technically. It was a big family because he was real hosting like all his cousins all his you know nephews nieces and all so i grew up surrounded with love um with you know uh, a big family so that's where i get the sense of new far that's where that's of, of new far so i grew up between here and then when my dad retired um I followed him uh, to Casamas because that, that was his dream to just, uh, I mean, I might have spent maybe 45, I don't know, 50 years in Dhaka, but he never spoke a good wall off because he was like, you know, <laughs> French, Jola, and some wall off. So his dream was just, you know, I'm, I'm here to work and then I, I want to go back to my farm. So he, he did that. And then uh, me and my younger, my young brother went with him. I studied in Casamasa, I studied in Pignon, um, was doing back and forth um, for, you know, if we have holidays, I'm, I might be in the car and, you know, sometime in the village just farming. And then, you know, he, he has to know that part of, you know, uh, farming, going to the forest and all, all those, you know, all the typical Jola boy stuff or Jola man stuff. Um, so, and even for my sisters when they were younger. So I came back to just go to the university and then, yeah, um, started studying English at uh, ICAD because I had a literature, literature, uh, I studied literature in high school, but I was really like, you know, I like science, but you know, I wanted something simple. For high school for me was just, I wanted just something quick. I, I didn't, I wasn't using my all, all my potential in high school. It was just, you know, I was young, I was surrounded by uh, friends, I had years ahead because I stepped one class. So I, I choose, you know, the easy path because I wanted to spend time with my friends. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's why high school for me was just, you know, I wanted to just go over it. Then when I got to the university, that's when I kind of regretted it I wanted to go to do science, uh, I, I like, but you know, if you graduated in city L, you cannot do, go to fat science, you know, so um, they sent me to English, but I, 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 I love English. I was really, really good at it. Um, so I studied one year and then I said to myself, no, I cannot, I cannot, I mean, I cannot do only this. I, need, I really need to go to science or computer, computer science. I started that in high school, fascinated about it. Then, yeah, I convinced my dad that I wanted to do something else. And then he told me, if you find a school that that that, that is willing to take you with your degree, you know, come come see me. And then I just looked for schools and Indian computer science school here. Um, but you needed to do tests, you know, just to see if you have like the level to be able to start that. And then I succeeded that test. So, yeah, I started doing engineering, com uh, you know, with English at the same time, and then had my first small job. So I had it, I had to do three things at the same time. Finally, I dropped I drop out at UCAD because I didn't even know if I um, three years. Uh, Bachelor, it's license, it's bachelor, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I did the I did the exam, but I've never known if I have it or not until now. So um I continue like the computer science and then um, in that field. And yeah, I was all you know, interested by everything related, for example, when I I was younger, I was the one that is, you know, that the teacher will will call to draw you know the maps on the, on the um in class or you know so I, I like drawing so moving forward um yeah i started you know just create clothes uh, i started new typically with the teacher i just put new 
on the t-shirt while, while I was interning. And then people were asking me, what is Nyongpa? I said, so that's when I start telling the story of how I grew up with my family and then having not a lot of siblings, ending up having a big family concept behind Nyongpa. And the sharing part on the togetherness in, in Senegal. That's why I said it's common because uh, if you come to the real area, um, you know that you know the first person that have like have a, uh, a stable job in town, you have to you know just take with you a lot of the family members. So that that was the case. Yeah. So I started that. Um, then people. People start asking. People wanted to be part of. Let me translate that. Let me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me translate that before you. Let me translate that before you carry on. So, mon père venu de Casamance et on a on a on a vécu au à Dakar. Et à un moment de ma vie, je suis reparti en Casamance avec lui parce qu'il avait envie de de nous faire connaître aussi la vie casamancaise. C'est pour ça que j'ai étudié à Bignola. Mais j'avais une passion pour pour tout ce qui était scientifique. Mais malgré tout, quand je suis rentré en, en université, je suis allé dans, en, en lettres modernes en anglais. Et puis j'ai dit à mon père que c'était pas suffisant, qu'il fallait que je puisse faire des sciences, que je puisse faire des, des sciences scientifiques ou quelque chose de scientifique. Et il m'a dit si tu trouves une école, tu tu me tiens au courant. Et donc j'ai trouvé une école indienne dans laquelle je suis rentré. Je faisais bien entendu mes cours en anglais également. Donc je faisais de l'anglais et, et des et computer science, euh, mais bon, euh, je ne sais même pas si je suis allé jusqu'au bout parce que euh, je, je travaillais en, en même temps euh, en aparté. Et, et en fait, il y avait ce sens de la famille, d'être ensemble, qui était très important que j'ai pris en allant euh, en, en Casamance et en, a, en ayant une, une grande famille également. Euh, et c'est ce sens-là que j'ai commencé à traduire sur mes t-shirts. Euh, c'est le premier produit que j'ai sorti. Euh, c'est pour ça que je l'ai appelé Niopar, qui veut dire euh, on est Olaf, je laisse continuer. Yes. Um, um, so, okay. so okay, carry on. The t-shirt. I mean, people ask me, "What are you doing?" I said, "Just, just sharing. It's just, you know, starting conversations." And at that moment, it was about creating a brand for me. It was just something that I just came up with, and then to connect with people it was not because I was in, you know. Um, I didn't mind having a good career as an engineer. Just I wanted, you know, if you if you just if you're a student in, in engineering school, you, if you know some of them, you know that you know you want to change the world, create you know great things, and you know you have a lot of ideas, and then you know so that was not um, a path for me, like in design. I liked it, but I didn't see myself being like you know a designer at some point. So it was just you know something that I had on on the side. Um, and then I got used to it, just creating. Then started creating some shirts because I'm a linen lover. So all my shirts, I, I was, you know, because my <laughs> one of my sisters had a, a small atelier. You know, she was doing clothes, so I just go use her tailors and um, do my own shirts. People start, oh, do you, you have a nice shirt? Can I have one? And then that start. That's when things started. You know, you know, just being interesting with the <coughs> with the shirt. Then um, one day I decided, okay, um, this is nice. I, I want to do a fashion show. I didn't know anything about fashion, typically. Like, um, so I said, oh, I, I'm gonna do a fashion show. I did it. I mean, fortunately, um, I sold. I was I sold out all the pieces because also one thing is what a lot of my friends are creatives. So a lot of my friends are photographers or are in other you know art path. So. I had like really good quality pictures and all. So people thought like this was a big brand and it was nothing. I was just doing that on the side. Um, and after the fashion show, I didn't like it because it was not the way that I, you know, you know, fashion is not, it was not really me. So I just did pose, continue working um, uh, in the company that I was working in. And then after, um, the, the click, as you said in French, was when I um, discovered, I rediscovered the, the mud cloth, which is Bogota. That's when things started uh, to get serious because um, I found a guy that was doing bags. And then I, said, I start, started draw, drawing bags and then just told him 
to use mud cloth to make me a bag for my kombucha. So just to go to work. Um, and then we, we did that with the local leather. We did some, you know, experimentation with the local leather, the dyeing process. We did all the process. Then when I posted that bag on Facebook, um, that's when things started to get, you know, tense. I, I had a lot of orders that I couldn't just, you know, do. Now I said, okay, this is this is getting interesting. That's when I, you know, started saying, okay, this might be something. Um, but still, I was working. I was still passionate. I'm still passionate until now. But I was really like into computer science. Uh, I quit my job. I started uh, doing consul consulting. Then after when I released um, the shoes, that was just a challenge um, for the shoes. I, I, I wanted, you know, I all, even when I was working in corporate. I, w I only wear sneakers, even if I'm wearing a suit, you know, it will be with sneakers. So I was like, okay, I want sneakers that look like me, that I would, you know, just, you know, get comfortable with it, that are creative and all. So I, st I just find one guy, I, I struggle to find some someone that just want to do my, uh, you know, my crazy things because people thought, oh, you want sneakers, you don't, you cannot find someone that can, you know, hear Senegal, uh, the artisans are not, you know, they don't know how to do it. I said, but have the ideas. So if I have someone that is, you know, willing to try, we can do something. And then that's when I had the first sample. And then when I posted it, that's just when everything changed, literally. Um, so, yeah, I finally, because by that time, I had another job at the government. I, I was working um at uh, ADE year because I had the uh, intern um, no, uh, as an assistant at ADE year they put me at uh, CDP which is Commission de Protection des Données Personnel. Then from there I just say oh uh, let me just focus on the brand. That's when I it was I stopped working like really corporate in 2014. That's when I started you know to focus on 100% on the brand. Yeah so and you know. uh, pour les francophones, je vais traduire les parties. Euh, donc après les t-shirts, après la création des t-shirts, il a, euh, en discutant avec sa sœur et d'autres choses qui se passaient dans sa vie, il a commencé à, à faire des impressions sur euh, du tissu et sur les chemises. Euh, et puis euh, sa vie a continué dans le monde corporatif. Il travaillait, donc il avait un job à côté. Et puis à un moment donné. Euh, Là où le déclic s'est fait, c'est lorsqu'il a découvert le Bogolan. Et à partir du Bogolan, euh, peu de temps après, il a commencé à faire des chaussures avec du Bogolan. Et, et ça a vraiment ouais. commencé en 2014. En fait, la première 2014, c'est vraiment l'année. Ouais. L'année où il a quitté le monde corporatif pour se mettre à fond dans sa, dans sa marque, c'est 2014. Euh, so it's just a yeah, summary, definitely, but definitely. Uh, carry on. Um, yeah. yeah. So when I, uh, after that, I started doing a lot of different pairs. When I started, every pair were limited. I was just doing one, two pair, one, two pair. Just you know, experimenting, just seeing how far we can go with the handmade um, sneakers made in Senegal. And with the, I started with the local leather, but I found out that it was not made for sneakers because you know the dyeing process was not complete. Cause we don't have like the right techniques of dyeing here. Um, so I started using, you know, the imported leather. Um, then after, I'm, I'm, I like challenges, because for me, I just like to, you know, push things uh, further. Then um, after the first collection, I mean, the first collection was just um, to try and see what I can come up with. But the first collection, the idea was, okay we're working on sneakers what is the i mean what makes sneakers it, other than the sport side but it's comfort um so i was working in that uh, and then i started going in a philosophical way like what is comfort just the definition of comfort and then i come up with the idea that comfort is different from a person to another from a geographical space to another because for example comfort uh for 
uh, a jola like me it's just having a, um, a good raining season and then to be able to grow your crops and then have a good harvest right and then if you go to the futa it's different it's just having a good you know a lot of cows and then have milk so in town for example comfort is just having maybe a nice apartment a good job and nice car and then just being able to just enjoy you know the city life um so I was just doing my research and then found out that the same word comfort, which was the name of the first collection, Nema, I, found, I, I chose Nema, which is comfort in Jola, in Mandinka, and in the latter, I mean, maybe six West African languages, the same word is the is, um, same meaning comfort, but comfort in a different definition. So that was the, the name of, of the first collection, Nema. So, um, yeah, and oh. then, um, so one sorry? thing led to the, I, I was just going to say exactly. to you, one thing led to the other, and it's yeah. interesting, a friend of mine, we interviewed before, uh, was saying that, that um, it's difficult to source leather. She is in yeah. Nigeria, she does incredible yeah. um, leather bags. We'll come to that. Let me just translate what you said. Donc, uh, quand il s'est lancé en 2014, les choses ont, ont avancé à façon assez rapide et à un moment donné, il s'est uh, posé la question de... Uh, il a fait, il a fait uh, une, une première... Uh, Je n'avais pas parlé de ça tout à l'heure. Il a fait une première, un premier défilé de mode qu'il a préparé avec de très, très belles photos. Et en fait, la, la beauté et la qualité des photos a fait qu'on uh, a noté, des gens ont noté, il était, on notait cette marque. Mais bon, lui, il connaissait pas très bien le métier à ce moment-là. C'était encore avant de rentrer complètement dans New Farm. Mais à partir de 2014, tu me corriges si je me trompe, hein, parce que ma mémoire n'est pas toujours, toujours bonne. Mais à partir de 2014, il s'est lancé dans, dans, le, euh, dans, le, dans, dans cette, cette marque, euh, corps et âme. Et à un moment donné, il a voulu faire une, une, euh, euh, comment dirais-je, une collection en pensant au confort. Et il s'est rendu compte que le confort, ça a un sens différent selon l'endroit le, d'où on vient. Pour lui, un, 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 de Casamance, euh, le confort, c'est d'avoir, de voir que son, euh, son troupeau va bien, que, c est, c est, euh, ça, ça, euh, que ses récoltes vont bien et que, et que tout le monde est content et tout le monde peut être nourri à partir de ça. Mais pour quelqu'un d'autre dans notre pays, ça va être euh, d'avoir un, un accueil familial qui est, qui est euh, extraordinaire ou d'avoir simplement euh, être à l'aise. Et donc, cette notion de confort, Ce nom euh, se retrouve euh, de la même façon en Casamance et dans d'autres langues africaines. Et euh, je ne vais pas le redire parce que je ne l'ai pas bien, bien noté, mais ce nom africain, qui veut dire confort, se retrouve dans plusieurs langues. Et donc il y a eu toute une étude, toute une recherche, tout un travail autour de ce concept de confort qui a permis en fait cette, à cette première collection uh, de voir la, voir yeah. la naissance. Um, so, so um, yeah, Nema was the first one. And then um, from that, um, I was like, what can I do um, within the brand to just um, create that exclusivity, like that just story? How can I just relate the stories that I'm telling on the fabric? And then I was really, uh, as I told you, already a fan of uh, Bogolan. So I decided just to go to Mali, just to source myself there. Um, so I went to Bamako and then I didn't find what I wanted. I, I took the road, so I took a bus here. I went to Bamako, like 24 hours ride, and then went to Bamako. I didn't find what I wanted. Took another bus, went to Segu, like I don't know how many miles. Um, I forgot, and then uh, in Segu, still, because Segu is normally the capital of of of, of Bogolan, because people are really well organized. They're doing a lot of nice things, but the thing is, they started modernizing the, the the mud cloth so i wasn't happy with like the the thickness of of the fabric so i was like okay where can i just find because i was like okay um i, I was kind of uh, yeah like I, I felt like i i've lost time i just you know i was useless to come there because i didn't have to go there because i didn't find what i wanted and then in the hotel that i took I find a guy that told me, okay, I have a guy in, in San, it's the, the, another city, maybe like 300 kilometers from there. He can, I'm sure you guys can come up with something. 
then one day I, I speak a bit of mandinka but I, I don't speak really bambara so, so the guy come with his motorcycle and he tell me yeah, let's let's go i didn't know anyone there then i followed him and then that ended up being like a good story because I, I um there's a group of cousins that have a small association that i work with until now so i draw i did all the drawings for for the mud cloth and then we extend uh, um i was using some uh, you know some dog on symbols and all just to you know tell the story that i was um that i wanted to work with so i worked with like them to create different types of of um um of mud cloths um so that was the 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 first start of part of the research from uh, for the collection the, the following up collection that, that is kasama so kasama means um going to uh, to an adventure but here uh, but kasama is a jola word um so kasama means for example in in, in kasamas or in, in and and i found i found out that even in that part of mali like in the uh, up north uh, just next to mopti and then until up to Bajanga and all they they have the same concept it's like growing your your farm up to um up to 10 years you have to uh, let it rest in french we call it jasher um so you have to let it rest and what they do culturally is you go to a different village where you have someone or a cousin or whatever and they give you some lands for free they host you for let's say all the rainy season you grow your crops and everything, and then once you harvest, you bring back your, your your harvest to your village. And then most of the time, there's a celebration. Your village, you know, just do a celebration because you came back with something, right? And they uh, we, we they, they they still do that in Kalamazoo, well, not a lot, but they still do it in Kalamazoo. So that was the concept behind Kasama because it's just the analogy was just me going to Mali, working with you know. Malian artisans, and then bringing back the results, which is the mud cloth, and then which is you know the harvest, and then creating the collection here in Dakar that you know just showcase those things. And then in that collection, I work in the, uh, I work with a lot of subject. I work in fertility. I work in because the, this those subjects are really like common in Kazamas or all like in women and all around fertility because my mom struggled with that also before having me so that collection was really that i really liked that collection and then yeah that was the first time that i started really designing mud cloth and then working with them just to tell the stories through the fabric that was the the kasama collection that was the second one um then um, I don't know if you wanna uh, say or let yeah me, okay my, let me try that if you don't know, um, you're gonna yeah. help me with a couple of things um much closer okay um so I, I after my first collection um uh, around comfort uh I decided to do something else and I went to Bamako at uh, <laughs> Um, pour pouvoir trouver uh, du tissu de Bogolan de, de qualité. Uh, mais j'ai rien trouvé qui me plaise et je suis donc allé à, 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 à Ségou, um, où uh, normalement le Bogolan a pris son origine. Uh, là encore, je n'ai pas trouvé exactement ce que je cherchais et à l'hôtel, j'ai rencontré quelqu'un qui m'a dit qu'il fallait peut-être que j'aille dans un autre endroit um, et, et, uh, qui était à 300 km. Et, et c'est là que j'ai fini par, par trouver le, le, le produit Euh, avec l'épaisseur que je voulais pour pouvoir créer ma collection. Euh, mais il y a un lien euh, direct avec euh, ce mot qu'on appelle Kazama, euh, qui, est la, 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 qui est la racine de, du, du mot Casamance. Euh, C'est qu'il y a un lien avec la terre. Je viens de Casamance et je viens d'une famille euh, qui, a des, euh, qui est dans l'agriculture. Et ce lien avec la terre, il est multiple chez nous parce que, euh, au bout de dix ans, la terre a besoin de se reposer. Euh, Et, et à ce moment-là, quelqu'un dans votre famille vous, vous donne un, une, un autre terrain pendant la, la saison des pluies pour pouvoir euh, faire de l'agriculture sur ce terrain-là en attendant que votre terrain se repose et que vous puissiez le réutiliser à nouveau. Et il y a un lien avec ma mère parce qu'elle a eu du mal à m'avoir. Euh, il y a un lien avec le, le manque de fertilité. C'est un moment où le, la terre n'est plus fertile. Euh, et donc, tous ces liens-là 
euh, ont contribué à, à la philosophie que j'ai établie autour de, ma, euh, de, de cette, cette deuxième collection. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm not too much no, off you, what you're saying yeah, in English, uh, but I'm translating the... Uh, yeah. Uh, so please carry on. Yeah, so that, that, that was the, the collection that was really important for me, the second one. Then um, what I usually do is after a collection, I release capsules. Capsules are some, I mean, it's just mainly my creative space because for me, collections are really serious. I'm not, it's not that I'm not having fun, but it's just here is just the results of the research that I'm doing. So it's just really like I put some barriers just so I can <laughs> follow the, the, the storyline, right? Um, so uh, let's say three months or six months after releasing a collection, I release capsules. That's where I just have fun with the colors. That's that's why you see a lot of uh, colorful sneakers and all, because it's just me having having fun with the uh, with the colors, with the patterns, with the you know the textures, with uh, everything. It's, there's no limit with capsules. Most of the time, they're limited because it's just the supply with leather. As you, people know here, we I mean we we don't produce leather, so I use leftovers from the big brands. Like you know here in Senegalese, we have a really like good tradition in craftsmanship so we have a lot of people that import leather so what i'm what i, what I ask them is just if you see their like leftovers of the big brands that's what i use to make you know the capsules right so most of the time i can find one piece of nice leather from a man or from another brand that's what i use most of the time it's just kind of a recycling um process just you know using those because it's quality leather also that's what I'm using on capsules most of the time. That's why most, uh, they're, they're limited. Um, and then after that, that's when I started working on the active collection. Because I have to know, my, for me, collection takes time. Uh, I, since Nyofa started, we only did three collections <laughs> since 2014. It's just only three collections, right? So Nema, Kasama, and then Potolo. So uh, the Potolo collection is just kind of because i had some capsules just uh, paying homage to uh sound the city that i worked with, with the mud cloth so I, I did that capsule also um but on the collection the, the next one uh, i mean the after kasama was potolo potolo is the name that the dogons give uh gave to the store um series b right um so the dogon have uh, they have deeper knowledge about um the solar system the stars uh let's say for example they knew that um series b which is a star invisible with a naked eye existed at least six centuries before the first big telescope was invented and then they also know that that star have an orbit of six years because every six years that's when they do the celebration called sigi which is also the name of series a like Sigi Tolo. Um, so that I was just going <coughs> deep into that story because I felt like these stories need to be known by the younger generation. So I started going there. I went to Abujanga uh, to do research um, just to speak to the Dogon that is there. And then just also read a lot of books, but most of, I mean, almost all the books are written by the Western. So I didn't want to just use only that i wanted to confront that with you know the oral let's say the oral uh, tradition that is still there so I, I seek help from a history professor and then one on one anthropologue to just help me combine those data that i that i had and then have my artistic um, um perspective on those results that's when when i, I created the collection um, potolo and then just so because it felt really important for me um to 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 really translate that story so the 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 the, the people that can uh, you know have some pieces of you know sneakers or whatever understand the deepness of that story so i go back to my background of of tech and then um so for for this collection it's a package it's not a fashion collection it's just a, a collection of let's say innovation so i started using 
uh, augmented reality to question the fabric where you have like the organ which is um who is the the spiritual guide of the dogon who tell you the story of that because they in in their um let's say in their analogy they said that they were guided by um sigi when they were coming to earth so they have kind of their own version of the big bang if they explain how their life on earth started so i deep dive into uh that uh, um, deep deep really into into that story so i came up with the augmented reality app we had a small film in a virtual reality you have actually two augmented reality apps so the other one uh question the mask so you know when they do the sigi which is uh the, the ritual that happened every 60 years they have mask celebrations so every mask come for a reason and at some point right so that app if you if you point, if you put your the phone with the app or the tablet with the app in front of that mask the mask speaks to you right and then the mask starts telling you why it came out who, who you know because we see the mask in museums in the, the artisanal villages right the, where people sell them but we don't know what they mean we don't know when they come out and we don't know that masks are part of who we are and they explain um, you know our our lives uh, you know so it was important to just create that familiarity with the mask for the younger generation that's why i, I use uh virtual reality and then uh we had also a video game but it's not like a video game that you play with your hands it's like a room with sensors and all that you, it's like you are a young dog on doing uh, his ritual his traditional ritual so you interact with the transparent screen and you have like all the, the symbols the symbols that are the symbols that you see also on the prints because i still do clothing so the prints of the stars because those stars um like they have really a way of drawing those stars so i did some prints of those stars in clothing and in the mud cloth so it's so people can get the round of of the collection so yeah since um that collection i, I released i released it here in the car for the first time like the beta version at my uh, here, here at home uh, so i invited it was kind of covid like by the end of covid um so i invited people home but i had a lot of people and then i thought you know uh, this is maybe for the art people so i decided to do it again during the bnr with the second week of the last bnr uh, but i was really surprised i didn't think people just were following closely what i was doing so I, I i just i was expecting let's say 50 to 100 people and then i end up having like maybe 300 people because uh, i rented a, a, a space at the former airport and then people came like i didn't expect that so that, i was really happy because a lot of families came and then i see kids interact the small kids interact with the video game with the vr and then they were really excited and then they they got it the thing is they got it even they got it way better than the adults so because if you if you don't you know uh, memorize the information from the augmented reality you cannot succeed on the game so you have to know which mask is which to be able to succeed on the game and you see kids like just killing it i was really that was really like the, the peak moment and then since then the collection is you know it's touring i'm doing you know pop-ups around the world just with galleries sometimes with universities just showcasing this collection yeah this is crazy this is crazy i'm discovering your story because you know we met here in Gorin yeah. and, uh, a few weeks ago and and took a biking uh, en partie ce qu'il a dit. Alors, il n'a fait que trois collections depuis la, la, le début de Neophar. Et la troisième, en fait, elle est euh, assez, assez extraordinaire. Je ne vais pas pouvoir retraduire tous les mots, mais il est allé euh, au Pays d'Ogon à nouveau et il a euh, étudié, euh, non seulement dans les livres, mais aussi auprès de différentes personnes, des anciens et différents historiens euh, et scientifiques, euh, l'histoire du, euh, du Pays d'Ogon. Et, et il y a une histoire qui est liée à, à, la, à une étoile, Sirius B, euh, qui, qui va part en orbite pendant trois fois, 
euh, six, pendant six ans euh, et qui, a, euh, qui, qui détient en fait l'histoire. Euh, il y a un, un lien avec le Big Bang, mais, mais vu par les Dogons différemment de ce qu'on nous raconte dans les livres, livres d'histoire. Alors, corrige-moi si je fais des, des erreurs parce que je n'ai peut-être pas tout, tout retenu. Euh, mais à partir de, euh, à partir de ces, ces histoires qu'il a pu euh, collecter, il a créé aussi cette marque et il est allé plus loin. Il a voulu euh, lier l'histoire, et le storytelling est très important dans la marque Neofar, euh, à de la réalité augmentée, la réalité virtuelle. Et donc il a créé un lien avec les masques, avec toute l'histoire, l'historique euh, dont on vient de parler, euh, qu'il a, qu a trouvé et qu'il a découvert en, en faisant de la recherche au Pays d'Ogon notamment et avec des historiens, euh, à, sa, à sa marque. Et il a créé un jeu euh, et il a inventé, invité des gens pour le lancement de sa marque à, à l'ancien aéroport. Il s'attendait à avoir peut-être une centaine de personnes, il y avait 300 personnes. Et pour, pour pouvoir jouer à ce jeu de réalité augmentée, il faut comprendre l'histoire des masques. Et donc les jeunes euh, euh, s'amusaient beaucoup avec ce jeu, et, et certains ont réussi, mais en tout cas, c'est ce lien entre l'histoire, la réalité augmentée, euh, qui, qui a créé cette marque qui est multiple, euh, et qui, euh, qui est en fait aujourd'hui euh, demandée un peu partout dans le monde. J'espère avoir traduit l'esprit de ce que tu as dit. Ok. I have a different question for you. Uh, we're going to get back into your story. Uh, and we will take the time that it, ta it takes because it's so it's so incredible. Um, yeah. There are a couple of people who have made comments. Uh, Valerie, thanks. Uh, hello. Um, Sauda, thanks. Hello. Uh, Malik, uh, Willy, yeah. such great to have you here. Feel free to ask some questions. N'hésitez pas à poser des questions et je les poserai pour vous à notre ami Milkos. So, what does brand mean to you? You know, with the Give us a link with the storytelling. It's it's such a big thing and a different thing yeah. from what I picked up, from what I listened to. Uh, yeah. You look at it from a different standpoint. There are words that people use for storytelling. It's important. It sells, etc. But um, give us your perspective. To me, because um, if we take it literally, brand is just a perception. Because brand, because most of the time, brand is not a logo or whatever. It's just a perception that you create. That's how we can define brand. But for me, it's way more than the perception. It's just, uh, for me, a way to, I, I, as you said, the word storytelling, I think, is kind of used all around. That's why I use it really, uh, like, I don't use it a lot. It's just, um, relating stories like unknown stories for, for me for me it's just with no forest what i'm trying to do as a brand is just taking the unknown stories that tell who we are and then bringing it to the table and then creating conversation from that it's just bringing a piece of knowledge to the masses and then create conversation we don't have the pretension to know it all but it's just okay we know this what do you think about it that's for 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 us that's it and then even the product is just that creating conversations and then just just exchanging from that's why i don't uh, that's why i do a lot of pop-ups it's just for me that's the kind of business model of the brand but it's also a way to connect with people that gravitate around the brand it's just not posting and selling it's just meeting people that's why Mirkos, we're losing you. Um, I can't hear you. Are we losing you? I can't hear you. Oh, I may sorry. be the only one, but I can't hear you. Can I hear you now? Not, not quite yet. Your headphones might have picked up. No, okay, better it's better now when you close. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, so thanks. Yeah, for me, it's just a way to connect with people and then uh, uh, relay telling stories that are unknown. It's just, for me, I'm doing some work and then I want to share it with people. And that's just, just the, for me, the brand is a channel to share what I know with people and then take what people know so it's an exchange. That's why I do a lot of physical events. That's why the video game is physical. It's not online. And so you have 
to come there and then experience it. It's just creating experience and sharing experience. For me, that's how I see the brand as an offer, not just a commercial. And of course, it's a business because right now I live off of it, um, but it's not the main goal. It's just I'm sharing knowledge. Okay. Okay, je vais traduire ça. Uh, I, I hope everybody is hearing uh, Milkos well. Um, donc, pour moi, le, le branding, c'est juste une perception. C'est quelque chose qui permet uh, de, de créer, en fait, uh, juste une conversation et, et de, de raconter des histoires qui permettent à ces conversations d'être multiples et, et de permettre aux gens de peut-être même rêver. Um, je vais, je vais juste en rester là pour résumer ce que tu as dit. Uh, your voice is coming in and out. I don't know if, if is everybody hearing Milkos well? Um, I, can, I can put the, the, the headphones maybe. Vas-y. Maybe if you do, yes, maybe we'll, we'll hear you a bit better. Uh, but everybody says, you are creating a brand of choice. Whatever your spirit leads you to feel and be, the greatest Hello? freedom is can, the freedom can, of choice. Can you hear me now? Uh, beautifully say. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. that's better. That's yeah. better. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, okay. yeah, they were here. Okay, okay cool. that's better, cool. I think. Um, yeah, for me, it's just sharing. Um, that's that's because they, they, they have a lot of you know conception of brands the commercial one, the business side, the storytelling, quote unquote. But for me, it's just a way to connect with people. Yeah, yeah. Ok. Connecting people, une façon de se connecter avec les gens, euh, c'est vraiment ce que représente euh, le brand et la conversation et le storytelling pour moi. Uh, I have a different question for you. Uh, so you have a lot of people from around the world on, on the call. Uh, there will be other people listening to this. On average, between 500 and 1,000 people, 1,500 yeah. people, 4,000 yeah. people listening to this over its What advice would you give to somebody who is inspired by you? I mean, bread is, is very special. It's very different. It's out there. It's, it's really, you know, I've got to know it over the last yeah. few weeks that I was doing my research. It's yeah. very, very distinct. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to do the same as you or, you know, want to embark in this, this kind of um, um, uh, field? For me, just the first thing is not to accept to be put in a box. That's, that's, that's the main thing for me. Um, cause when I started, people told, told me, Oh, you think a brand is just, you can just come up and then create a brand. But I said, okay, let me do it. I mean, just not be afraid of failure. That's, that's, that's one thing. Cause for me, it's not that I like, no one likes failure, but I'm not afraid of it. Right. Cause I create for myself. Um, um, a lot of my, my friends that, that came to my, uh, uh, home, see a lot of pairs that I unreleased. They told me, oh, well, this is nice. Why, why won't you release it? I said, no, because I don't like it. So I create for me, for my soul, for things that I would, I like to wear. If I don't like it or I don't, I don't, I don't want to see someone wear it, it won't come out. So, so it's just you have to be, you have to trust your guts and then be your own self, your true self. So if you want to be in the creative space, especially, because if you want to be in the commercial side, you have to see what, what, what is the trend, what people are, are, you know, wearing. But I'm not in that space. I'm more into sharing what I, my vision, what I like with people. And then I'm fortunate that people like what I like, but that's maybe the main advice. So you can translate that authenticity because it's a part of you that you give, or it's a part of, your research or your knowledge that you share with people. So don't, uh, you know, let people put you in a box and then share your true self. I think within the creative space, that might be my main advice because you can learn. I mean, be, op be open to, to learn. I, 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 I went back to study design in the US, like when I had the opportunity to be selected for Yali. So I choose to do, go study again and then Right now, I want to go study something else, um, but I'm passionate by uh, really the, f the learning, the learning process, learning from people, learning from just people that know 
more than you. Just be open to, you know, learning new things. Yeah. Uh, alors, pour moi, uh, la, la créativité est quelque chose d'important. Uh, je, je ne suis pas dans un mouvement où je suis des, uh, uh, des trends, où je suis uh, des mouvements uh, de mode. Je suis dans un mouvement où je partage avec les gens ce qui m'inspire. Je partage avec les gens ce que je ressens uh, dans le monde créatif. Uh, et, 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 et je vais dire, entre parenthèses, il y en a d'autres qui l'ont fait, et c'est des génies comme uh, il y a une ou deux personnes qui ont dit que tu étais « he is a genius ». Uh, et, et notamment quelqu'un que j'admire beaucoup, qui a, qui, a dé, qui a développé un téléphone que tu n'utilises pas, je crois, c'est uh, ah. Steve Jobs, ouais. qui ne faisait pas <rire> ce que tout le monde fait. Uh, ouais. Find a different path, ouais. ouais. ah, un, autre, un autre chemin. Et donc, uh, pour lui, c'est ça, la créativité, c'est ça, um, ouais. ce qu'il inspire, c'est ça, l'authenticité qu'il partage avec le monde. Et, et, et il espère que ça plaise aux gens et, et, et ça plaît. Ouais. Et donc, c'est vraiment... Formidable. Donc ça, c'est vraiment un résumé de ce qu'il a dit. That's a summary of what he said. A, a few comments. People made some comments. Uh, so uh, Sauda said uh, he's a genius. Uh, Val Valerie said amazing. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Thanks a lot. Such Thanks an inspiration, a lot. says Malik. Uh, then, then you are creating a brand of choice. Whatever your spirit leads, uh, you feel and be uh, the greatest freedom is a freedom of choice. I think I've read this before, but I'm reading it again. Um, And, and we love to see creative people that are willing to share stories uh, through their arts. Uh, toutes nos félicitations, il est notre fierté, nous jeunes entrepreneurs du même secteur. You the best, Anyofa. Alléluia, uh, says some. Uh, welcome, welcome, everybody. So, uh, you, you are speaking reasonably often. Uh, sorry, there's a question here. Let me ask the question okay. first, and then I'll ask you my, mine. Um, if he were to create a billboard that started coming soon, a billboard where it started coming soon. What would you, what would the billboard look oh, like? Oh, the, the coming soon, like what, what I'm working on or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for instance, yeah. Yeah, what, um, what, yeah, what, what I'm working on is, is uh, I think I've talked to a lot of people about it. I'm working on uh, the next collection is called Ajola. So that's, that's, that's the, 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 a jola that's min jola that's that's the next one so it, it's it's written uh, with the with the scientific a you know the a you know that you put with the with the e so that's the e uh, and then jola so that I, I'm, I, I started working on the next one like a year ago um so i don't know when it's gonna come out but it's coming soon <laughs> yeah okay so Yeah. The billboard would say Ediola. Ediola, the, uh, the, the build, mm -hmm. the, l'enseigne dirait Adiola. Uh, a, mm -hmm. uh, le, a ancien A avec un E. Ediola, mm -hmm. une ethnie uh, de, de Casamance, uh, une ethnie très forte, yeah. une des grandes ethnies de, de ce pays du Sénégal, une des grandes ethnies africaines. Um, et uh, et yeah. il travaille dessus et, et ça, va, ça va bientôt arriver. Um, so, my question to you is, you speak a lot and I, I saw you on different yeah. uh, interviews. And um, what, how do you prepare for a speech? Are you just completely authentic, natural, or do you like to prepare a lot, um, your, your um, speeches? How do you, how do you I, prepare? I, can, I, I won't say I prepare. It's just, uh, I like it to be natural. I trained a lot, uh, like throughout the years. And uh, also the, the Yali helped a lot. Um, Because I had the chance to have like good coaches uh, when I was there in the US, uh, maybe six, uh, 20, yeah, six years ago, seven years ago. Um, but yeah, I'm, I have my routine of just, you know, uh, thoughts. I, I, I like just being alone, just when I have, you know, a talk or a panel, just, you know, maybe 10 to 20 minutes alone. But I don't write a lot. Of things, it's just uh, uh, <laughs> I like to just come up with what I have, but um, I definitely like choosing properly my words. That's 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 the training that I do. Even while I'm doing the interview, I like you know thinking about the meaning of the words before saying them. That's that's maybe my 
the thing that I that is I don't know if it's my secret or not, but I don't just like talking talking. I just like thinking about the words, really the meaning of the words before saying them. That's why sometimes I can just you know take minutes to just you know think and then just let it come up. Yeah. Alors, je posais la question de savoir comment est-ce qu'il se préparait pour toutes les interviews et toutes ces prises de parole qu'il fait. Et il me dit qu'il il préfère être authentique et naturel. Il ne se prépare pas beaucoup. Mais par contre, le programme Yali, qui est un programme qui avait été lancé par le président Barack Obama et qui permet à des entrepreneurs africains notamment d'être d'avoir un programme de formation, je crois que c'est trois ou six mois, euh, aux États-Unis euh, et, et qui leur permet en fait d'avoir des, des outils et des, euh, des compétences euh, nouvelles pour pouvoir euh, progresser dans leur, dans leur entrepreneuriat et dans leur entre entreprise, Il lui a permis d'avoir euh, des, des formateurs et des coachs euh, très intéressants et de, de réfléchir différemment. Mais en termes de préparation, euh, la, la chose essentielle, c'est qu'il ne dit pas, il n'a pas juste un, ce qu'on appelle un « flow of consciousness » quand il parle, euh, en parlant sans cesse. Il pense aux mots qu'il va utiliser pour, pour développer une idée. Donc ça, c'est vraiment une, une des choses qu'il utilise. Mais sinon, il, il préfère avoir la spontanéité dans l'entretien plutôt que de trop la préparer. Training is a guard rail to keep you focused on your message. Uh, says a very good speaker, yeah. that's uh, Valerie. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions for you. Um, you you're fairly young and you started at a young age. Um, and you... you meet people around the world yeah. uh, of different ages. Um, any, any advice to people who may be constrained by environments, family, um, scarcity, uh, to really be able to free their mind and free their spirits and have an incredible mindset to be able to be focused mm, and successful? That's a, that's a tough one. Because <laughs> um, um, you have to, I mean, you have to learn to set boundaries, but not in a bad way. For example, for me, family was really heavy when I want, was really, I, I, I won't say they were not helpful because they wanted you to succeed. But as I studied computer science, people wanted me to stay in computer science because it was stable, right? Um, and just telling them, okay, I'm, you know, leaving to do, to go make shoes with artisans, you know, we're in Senegal, that, that doesn't make sense for people, right? Um, so you have, there's a strength to, uh, to, to have for that, but also you have, uh, in, 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 in countries like ours, you have to find allies. So allies, uh, like people that you know the family trusts, and then you create a relationship with them. That's how, that's how I did it. Um, I have one of my uncles that everyone, that is my namesake. And then everyone in the family look up to him. So I went there and explained him exactly what I wanted to do. And then he, he can use like his proper words to explain to the family, let the kid just try what he's, what, you know, what he has. But because it's really difficult. I, I know that here, like, especially if you want to do something creative. Now it started getting maybe more normal, uh, more, more and more, but it's really difficult if you want to step out to the standard way uh, <coughs> in society. So you have to find allies that really can convey your message to the family or to the people that counts for you. And then after, for me, family is important, but outside of the family, I don't let people, you know, uh, define who, who I am because they don't know me, right? Um, so it's not that I don't care, but somehow I don't care what people think because they don't define me. Um, so you have to have that mindset also of people that don't know you, that are not close, don't care about what they think about you because they don't know you. If they know you, they, they would know better, right? But they 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 they're outside so they only see you from from afar and then have an idea of you but they don't know you right so make sure the family you align with the family and at some point just go yeah okay i'm losing you i've been losing you are oh, you here sorry. Yeah. sorry okay 
Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me to, 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 to go back to that or? Yeah, just make, make sure that you're not defined by, by people who are, you know, outside yeah. of family, outside mm -hmm. of family. Let, let me translate that. Uh, donc, je vais poser la question, comment est-ce qu'on fait pour ne pas avoir un, un esprit uh, uh, de pauvreté, un, un esprit uh, limité uh, lorsqu'on est créatif et comment, comment faire pour être complètement libre uh, et, et, um, je reviendrai à un commentaire de, de Michelle Obama. Um, uh, okay. Somebody just said that they heard everything. Oh, thank you. Um, et ce qu'il dit, en fait, c'est qu'il ne laisse pas les autres définir. Et particulièrement si c'est quelqu'un qui n'est pas de sa famille. Et même dans sa famille, il a dû, à un moment donné, parce qu'il voulait faire de la il était créatif et faire quelque chose de créatif. On voulait le mettre dans une boîte, euh, il faisait de l'informatique, donc il fallait qu'il soit dans l'informatique, mais il est allé voir un oncle euh, avec qui il a parlé et qui, leur a, qui, qui a expliqué au reste de la famille de le laisser faire ce qu'il voulait, parce qu'il était artiste avant tout et qu'il allait utiliser l'informatique et, et d'autres choses pour pouvoir créer ce qu'il voulait. Donc, ne, ne vous laissez pas définir par les autres. Euh, je vais utiliser un autre terme, n'ayez ne ne, ne, pas le besoin d'être validé par l'autre, euh, soyez vous-même, soyez authentique. Euh, soyez fort mentalement pour pouvoir euh, euh, que ce soit prendre la parole en public ou que ce soit. Euh, I wanted to just add. I heard um, uh, an interview of uh, Michelle Obama. I may have put it on my uh, Instagram, uh, um, on my status, uh, where, where she was saying, um, you know, people with the best of will, sometimes very close people to you, uh, they will. Um, put on their fears onto your shoulders and want you to take. Exactly. And, and they will exactly. shrink and they will actually create exactly. toxic exactly. environments. And exactly. you have to get rid of it exactly. to be able to be, be yourself. Uh, and, and what yeah. you were saying was uh, making me think of that. I just wanted to uh, just read some of the comments and one question that is being asked. Um, so there's one comment which is, uh, love the confidence. Um, another one which is, uh, we heard what you said, which is great. And before I ask the question that's here, um, because the question is, who would he would who who would you like uh, to see uh, that is famous wearing your sneakers? But before that, I will ask you, who is famous <laughs> that is wearing your sneakers already? Uh, and I think um, there are a couple. Yeah, yeah, there's there's, there's, there's a lot of them. I mean, you have the the main. Uh, I mean, the most seen Alicia Keys, uh, Swiss Beats. Um, you have uh, some NBA players. You have Lupita. Um, I have uh, the King of Morocco that bought the whole collection. Um, so yeah, uh, they, there's some yeah. some some names uh, that 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 really enjoy like the, the work that I'm doing. So yeah. Um, I know I know Joachim Noah loves your your sneakers. I don't know if he wears them, but he uh, he told me about them. But I know Lou yeah, 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 a lot, a lot, sneakers, a, a, a lot, a lot. I mean, he has, he has a lot of them. That's that's really a good a good big brother uh, of mine. Lou is really like now I can consider him my big brother. We we talk often. Um, Lou is really a, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah he's a good man. Definitely. He's a, and um, with. Actor yeah, Whitaker yeah, wears yeah, his sneakers as well. Yeah, I believe. Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, he came, he came, he came to see one of Forrest my Whitaker, my, my yeah. pop-ups. So, yeah, he came to see one of your pop-ups. So, Valerie, I hope you got your answer. Uh, quite a few already, and and I'm sure a few few more uh, he can imagine. Uh, so, um, my last few questions: um, If you had a crystal ball, and um, yeah. and a virtual reality mask and you could project yourself into 2045 right. where would you be? um in Casamas. uh yeah uh, in Casamas. yeah yeah for me okay. I, I i don't see myself living outside of senegal especially uh, i'm really like <laughs> i'm really a rural boy I, I was born in town but i really like the countryside um, so right now I'm, I'm I'm farming, so I have my, my farm, um, and uh, yeah, so that's um, for me. Yeah, in that years, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely in Casamance. I'll see myself in Casamance. That's for sure. We're still working and still, you know, traveling, moving, but that would be the base. Projetez-vous en 
2045 avec une, une boule de cristal et un, un masque de réalité virtuelle, où est-ce que vous en serez C'était la question et sa, sa réponse tranchée a été en casamance. Je serai toujours en train de travailler, en train de faire des choses créatives, mais je serai en casamance. J'ai un... Euh, J'ai le sang, de, le sang et l'âme d'un fermier et, et, et j'aime bien, euh, bien ma terre. Uh, you may not know that, but we have that in common. My grandmother oh, is from okay. I'm also from Casamance. Oh, cool. Uh, that's another link. That, yeah. We invite everybody yeah. who's listening to go to Casamance. Um, but we're coming to an end. Wonderful yeah, conversation, definitely. my friend. Yeah. Uh, more to come. Uh, in, uh, You have, you're doing some incredible things. Yeah. Uh, if you have a final message, what um, would it be? For, for the, I mean, I, I like talking to the younger, like my younger self most of the time. It's just go for the knowledge. Because we, uh, we're in the countries where we like diplomas, we like degrees. But, you know, if you look at the education system, some of the time you do just go for a degree and then you have a job. And then that's just a routine. Go for the knowledge. Just if you save up a bit, if, even if you have a small job, travel. Because I remember when I graduated, when I came back to Dakar, my first uh, scholarship, like, you know, I uh, had the bourse at, in UCAP. The first here in, uh, in the student language, we said, le rappel, le premier rappel uh, de, de l'UCAD. I took it and then went to Pompier uh, at that time and then just do a, I did a small tour of Senegal, just out of nowhere. People were saying, oh, the, okay, you know, my friend was just going to Coloban or Sandaga buying some jeans and shoes and all. I just took my money and then do a tour of Senegal. I was 18. Um, so just go uh, make, you know, build your own self and then just go for the knowledge. Talk to people. Talk to people you look up to, and most of the time you will learn a lot from them. From them, for me, that's that's what I want to share. If I have a last message to pass, I like to talk to the young, young, and talk to myself, a version more young than myself. I would say, focus more on learning. Learn et accumule des connaissances. Quand je suis revenu de mes études à Dakar, j'ai commencé à faire, là où mes amis allaient à Coloban ou ailleurs, j'ai commencé, j'ai investi mon argent et j'ai fait un tour du Sénégal. Et je suis allé découvrir différentes choses, différentes personnes. Euh, parlez à des gens qui vous inspirent, apprenez auprès des gens qui vous inspirent euh, et, et continuez d'apprendre toujours. Euh, je vais, I'm going to continue and finish with a couple of comments. Uh, thanks for your interactions, everybody. Uh, thanks, Valerie. You have a couple of nice comments. Go experience life. It's a learning opportunity. Uh, she translates nicely what you were saying. Congratulations and continued success. Keep focused forward, uh, she is saying. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Merci à tous d'être venus. Uh, life is a learning journey. Travel well. Yeah, thanks. Uh, from Valerie, too. Merci à tous d'être venus. Merci, merci, oui. merci à toi. C'était passionnant. Vraiment... <rire> ouais. On envie de compter en effet, c'était vraiment super, j'ai vraiment aimé l'interaction, oui. j'ai vraiment aimé le, <rire> le public qui était là, les gens en tout cas qui étaient là, c'était vraiment très interactif, et euh, thanks, thanks a lot, thanks. Ouais. Super, well, thank you very much everybody. We'll see you next time with another speaker, and we've had uh, the fortune of having younger speakers this year, uh, and uh, who are changing the world. Merci pour le partage. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Peace right. and love. Bye-bye.